hear about YouTube charging back earnings if you have demonetized videos. Yes, I didn't watch that yet, but I saw it on Twitter. I saw this floating around and I was going to watch it tonight. Thanks for reminding me. I want to see what this is all about. Hey, everybody. How's it? So YouTube has a new... Well, I'll probably go over it, but I'll just quickly explain. YouTube has a new thing that you have to agree to, otherwise you lose your partnership. If you don't agree to their new terms by July 10th, you're no longer a YouTube partner. So they're taking it very, very seriously. And in these terms, there's apparently some extremely shady shit that he is about to talk about. He's Prime Zeke in the gift sub Livy. Also, you might recognize him. For a long time, he has fought hard for the right to repair. I think he is fantastic. I want to get that out there right now. The work he's done in the right to repair community, I think, has been extremely important stuff. How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Friday morning. Today, I'm sitting here with Clinton the Cat, and we're going to be discussing something that made Clinton the Cat very angry today. So, I logged into my YouTube account, and I saw a banner on the top of the screen. It said, action required, yeah. accept new terms to stay in the YouTube partner program, and to start earning shorts ad revenue. Now, I don't really care about shorts ad revenue because I don't do shorts because it's just not a video content form that I'm good at. But the partner program is what allows you to put ads in your videos, which allows you to get money from YouTube, which is nice because Mr. Clinton likes $3 per can cat food and we have to spoil the Clinton. Aww. So I went to click this link and actually do something crazy, which many people don't do when it comes to legal agreements, which is read it. And Cringe. Luckily, there's guys like him that actually read it. The majority of people, myself included, when there's terms of service, everyone just assumes that it's just nothing, which is exactly what I did. So I saw that the other day, and I just assumed that it was something very simple, very silly, no big glaring changes, so I've already accepted it, yeah. I had no idea they snuck in some wacky shit there, and I guess I should have known better when it comes to YouTube. Because in every other service, the terms, like, it's always just nothing. Like, actual fucking nothingness half the time. Except for this one time, YouTube banked on everyone just glossing over it and just being like mindlessly droning through it and then just clicking accept, which is exactly what I did on it. It is honestly isn't that long and it really doesn't take much time to get to the part that in my opinion is a massive screw job. So if you just search through this agreement, you will see this one yeah. section called non-qualifying revenues. This is the it screenshot says over I saw. here, and I'll zoom in to make it easier to view on the screen. YouTube may either one withhold or adjust any partner earnings associated with a breach of the terms, including the YouTube channel monetization policies, or two charge back or offset such amounts against future partner earnings payable to you. YouTube will notify you if any of these circumstances occur and provide details on about how you can appeal in accordance with these. That's policies. so evil. Now, That's the so main evil. Problem that virtually everybody has spoken about on YouTube. YouTube at some point in time, whether it is a creator with 1,000 subscribers or a creator as large as PewDiePie, is that it is virtually impossible to actually get through to somebody at YouTube and speak to them if something like some sort of error occurs and you violate one of their policies. One of the best examples that I have on my channel of this happening to me is this video I did of an angry Clinton. So my cat's name is Mr. Clinton and he was meowing for about one or two minutes very angrily. So I decided to record it because when Clinton meows, it's kind of funny. And he got flagged. It says we are removing this video because it violates our community guidelines. You'll be able to view the video for seven days. That's crazy. This period allows you to review the content to decide whether you wish to submit an appeal. I had problems having the video reinstated until I did the video on the content strike that I got for, I'm not kidding, harmful and dangerous content. This video is literally a cat. It was an adorable little cat. And the cat is just sitting there on the counter and he's meowing. Look at him. He's just he's just sitting there, and he just he's going round, round. I bet if you took that video to Twitter, though, he'd get a totally different response from all the pseudo intellectual veterinarians on there who have never once left their goddamn house or the comfort of Twitter. They would diagnose this cat with depression, call him a terrible cat owner. It's clearly in distress. Maybe it's starved and it's lashing out for food, desperate to eat anything because its owner's neglecting him and shit like that. And that's probably exactly who was behind the manual flags at YouTube. Those absolutely delusional weirdos. That happens with every cute animal video ever for some reason. That is so fucking weird how that always happens. Dangerous content for a cat meowing is wild. Now, it's one thing if YouTube makes a mistake and one of your videos disappears. It's 
It's one thing if YouTube makes a mistake and one of your videos disappears. At some point, any content creator with thousands of videos is going to say mea culpa, whatever it is, what it is. They're going to curse, but they realize that there's no other platform on the internet that is going to allow them the reach, the monetization that, that YouTube does. So they, they just kind of suck it up and deal with it. But I think something that's going to cause a lot of people to start saying, no, screw this, is the ability for YouTube or Alphabet to literally reach into your bank account and take back money that they gave you based on a robot striking your cat for hate speech because he was meowing. And that is what you have the potential for here. If I am reading this contract right, and if I'm reading this contract wrong and you're an attorney, please do let me know. This I'm is a serious, sure right. serious issue. Now, again, That's they say even if you do something with your bank account, like let's say, I don't know, you know, set it up so that there's no money in it, no overdraft protection. So if Google tries to go in and take money out, there's nothing there. This is still an issue if your channel is creating revenue right now and they decide to go back and take back revenue from a few years ago. The obvious problem here is that even if you set up your bank account without overdraft protection and you immediately transfer money out of it the moment YouTube deposits money into it, is they can take away from future revenues. So the money that you would make on YouTube last month is not given to you until this month, which would mean that let's say you're supposed to get, I don't know, a thousand bucks deposit in your bank account this month and that video made you $20. That would mean that instead of getting a thousand bucks deposit in your account, you get 980. Now, maybe that's not that bad, but what if you have a video that made you $10,000 at one point and now they decide for the next five or 10 months, you're just not getting any money because that one video gets a strike because YouTube's AI is yeah. ridiculous. That, that is extremely concerning. That's the conversation I saw happening on Twitter about the whole thing, especially the ability to go into your bank and take it out. It's that kind of shit. Is, um, well, that's very scary stuff. I don't even see how that's legal. I'm not an attorney or anything, but that actually just doesn't seem legal. There's some Ray, Squilliam, Stoney, and the Bits Neon. That's platform ending shit for any other platform. Yeah, but YouTube doesn't have competition. At least not yet. You can't just take back money already paid out. That's the impression I was under. But, I mean, YouTube has billions of dollars. Surely they wouldn't throw this out without extensive legal work done around it. Don't know about the YouTube problem. Well, he's still explaining it. Basically, YouTube's got these new terms, and in the terms, they have a clause where they can charge back. If you break a rule or something, they deem you a little, a little too extreme or whatever, they can either not pay you what you're owed or even do a chargeback, which, as he points out, could mean them legitimately like taking that money out of your account. That's some dystopian shit. Well, yeah, it's extremely concerning. Like, it's a, it's a huge deal. And yeah, I've seen them, Neon. Imagine they take your money for every demonetized video. So I don't think it would be for demonetized videos. Hold on, let me send a quick message. It'd be more for videos that break a rule. So in his example here, it's his cat video was about to be taken down because it was viewed as like hate speech, hateful, dangerous content. So not exactly like a demonetization, which doesn't make it any better, by the way. It's still beyond shady and what to me sounds like to be borderline illegal. Things in tier one, Jackson, and the resub, Carl. This is a serious concern if you're somebody who does YouTube as their full-time job, as their full-time business, as opposed to somebody like me who is just here to have a large recliner with a cat on it and yell at his camera at the end of the day. This is, honestly is not really the biggest deal to me because again, I have a full-time business that I, I run and I have a job on top man. of it. YouTube okay. at the end of the day is what I consider extra. If I make money off of it, then great. If I don't make money off of it, then 
you know, M Mr. Clinton has to eat $2 a day cat food instead of three. It's not. But if you're somebody whose primary form of revenue is this platform, then again, it is one of many, many reasons that it is very important to diversify your revenue stream. And it's also one of those reasons that in a video that I did that was massively unpopular, uh, where I was suggesting that people, creators should really start to focus on getting their revenue from uh, the user rather than the uh, the advertising platform that this is going to have to be a serious uh, serious shift that I think a lot of people are going to have to make. So I've done two videos on this. Uh, you blocking YouTube ads is piracy, and why you should never feel bad for blocking ads. YouTube system sucks. Which ironically, this is funny. I actually don't have the ad block rod right now. <laughs> Which is so stupid because that's, that's cute. the title of the video. But anyway, I was saying why you should never feel bad for blocking ads and blocking YouTube ads is piracy, uh, which obviously I disagree with. I'm just I, I kind of have a, a title there that, that for, you know, just a raw. In that, those videos, I was discussing how a viewer gave a YouTube creator something like $1 over a period of five or 10 years. In my opinion, that YouTuber is better off than they would be if that, cre if that viewer gave them nothing, but had ads turned on. And one of the reasons that I genuinely believe in this is because, because at the end of the day, you, in my opinion, YouTube is managed by a very, very borderline personality disorder, artificial intelligence that you have true. no way to correct Super and nobody true. to speak to when it has issues. Which again is one thing if they're just saying an old video may no longer make revenue. But now that they're saying that they can literally go back into your account and claw back the money if that ridiculous AI does something stupid and there's nobody you could talk to about it, that's a serious financial impact on your business if you've actually made YouTube your primary business, which thank God I never did. And this it seems to me like it goes even beyond that, though, because like, how do are they going to like, how are they even going to dictate how much they're going to take? Where does that come from? Like, where do, who decides that? So you had one video that was a violation. Where's you going to take all of your money? What stops them from doing that? We won't pay you this month because you broke one of our one of our rules. The AI does. Oh yeah, the AI seems to work really well. I'm sure it'll stop them from overdrafting and taking all of that or taking too much back. Like I don't even know how you're supposed to quantify like what rule breaking amount makes sense. The answer is zero, but in these terms it just doesn't like it doesn't compute with me. There's no set of guidelines to work with. So to me, this reads like, well, we may withhold and we may charge back for these rule violations, but how much that'll be? Well, we don't know. It could be $10. It could be 100% of all of it. We, we're not really sure. YouTube runs as a net loss for Google overall. So you're getting old information. YouTube ran at a loss for like the better part of 10 years, but it has been profitable, at least to my knowledge, for quite a while now, at least for the last three or four. Let's see. In 2021, YouTube's advertising revenue accounted for 11.2% of Google's total revenue, and YouTube's advertising revenue is a percentage of Google's global revenue from 2017 to 2021. So yes, it seems like it is now, yeah, at least from everything I'm reading here. It was able to generate 28 billion in 2021, making it profitable. There's a lot seeming to confirm that it's not just profitable, but like a big workhorse for Google in terms of their bottom line. Revenue does not equal profit. No, 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 but they're, it's just going deeper into like their financial side of things. This is their revenue and talking about how it's profitable now from this article. Who is this? Four week? What the f I don't know this this source at all. Maybe this isn't a reliable source, but there is quite a few headlines of this. But it did run at a net loss for a long time. Thanks, Risa Brian. I don't go on Forbes because it doesn't let you go on there with an ad block, and I refuse to turn ad block off for Forbes. As of September twenty, as of September sixth, twenty twenty two, it's worth over a hundred and eighty billion. God damn. 
God damn. Holy shit. These are prime bizarre. These numbers are absolutely unreal. It grew 45% in just the last year. It's still fucking growing. That's crazy. That's all that shorts now. Shorts, I imagine, are absolutely crushing it for YouTube. COVID shorts, yeah. Well, COVID and shorts absolutely blew it up for sure. I does something stupid early and let's face it youtube is still run by susan wojcicki so it most likely will be implemented improperly is going to seriously affect people that have not diversified their revenue streams that do youtube as a business i strongly suggest that if you are one of the people that actually has youtube as their main job that does youtube as a business do everything that you can to start moving away from the advertiser supported model and do everything that you can do to start working with the patron supported model a lot of your viewers are going to say i wouldn't pay 50 cents for this your content uh, why would i pay 50 cents for this guy Garbage YouTube's out of reach. Fuck, I'm, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Screw those people anyway. Like, if somebody doesn't think that you're worth 50 cents, then why do you care what they think? I find so many people that make YouTube content that say, I'm afraid to do that it. because my audience will be mad at me. But at the end of the day, you have to think about the people that you're making mad. You're making people mad that think that you are, that the entirety of your content over the course of a year is not worth 50 cents. Why do you care about pissing people off that think that you're worthless anyway? Again, if you're like me and you that's, already have a job and a business and you don't have to worry about it, that's quite this, a breakdown. Well, fine. Okay. But if you're like me and you don't have a job or a business to worry about, it might just be worthwhile to put together a general YouTube strike. I really do wonder what would happen if the largest creators on the platform said, you know what, I'm not signing this. Because again, you have to review and accept the terms to remain in the YouTube partner program. What would happen if the largest creators on the platform that already had some FU money already just said, you know what, we're not going to accept this? I think that would actually be a really cool thing to organize. Like, what if the largest creators on the platform did videos on this and then also said, we are not accepting this agreement? I don't see it happening. It's, it would be a really Even if they didn't do what I did and just mindlessly click accept on it, I still don't see it happening. That'd be too risky for them. I don't think it would happen. I think it would be, and I also don't think it would matter to YouTube, to be fair. I, I think YouTube at this point does not give a fuck about, like, the upper echelon of the YouTubers or anything. They have such a huge reach now at this point. They don't need the YouTubers. It kind of fills itself with just random videos and shorts. So I don't really think they'd care to begin with. Organize and put together because again, at this point in time, the, the alternatives to YouTube are just, in my opinion, sincerely lacking. And I mean, let's face it, they're just, they're just bad. But it's something to think about because like, nothing's going to change if we just hit review and accept and hit yes. I don't want to click review and accept and hit yes to that. I really don't. I really don't. Let it is scary. In the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Goddamn. Hey. That really is kind of a terrifying new policy. I don't think that'd work that way on YouTube though, Ty. Because that would only be for the um, the company, not the individual. Wouldn't the onus be on them to be the reimburser? You can't, because YouTubers are treated as employees of YouTube. I would imagine. All right, can an employer just take back pay? I, I don't think that would I don't think that would fly. And it's still in their garage, Neon. Thanks to the Prime Alex. Contractors at best. Oh, yeah, maybe they're considered contractors. Maybe that is the, the right classification. You're not remotely considered an employee. Well, yeah, maybe employee is not the right word. Maybe it is contractor. Well, when you're a partner on YouTube, you do have to... Uh, what, I don't think it's a 1099. What the fuck is it? I think I'd recognize it if I see it. What are all the ones that it can be? There's a 1099, there's a W9. What is the tax form you have to sign for the partnership program? It's a W9. And what does a W9 indicate? No, it's not a 1099, I just looked it up. It's right here on, on their support page. 
A W-99 will be required for U.S. person, companies, and partnerships, so on. This is for their partnership program. So what does the W-9 indicate? Look at the bits of bungie. You sign a W-9 to get a 1099. <laughs> Wait, what? That doesn't make sense. Aren't they two separate tax forms? Let me see. Uh, 1099 is for miscellaneous income, including, uh, well, actually, hold on, let me get like a bigger breakdown. The 1099 is a collection of tax forms documenting different types of payments made by an individual or a business that typically isn't your employer. The payer fills out the form with the appropriate details and sends copies to you and the IRS reporting payments and made during the tax year. And then when you are part of the YouTube partnership program, they send you a W-9. Yeah, so for YouTube, they make you submit a, or you need to fill out a W-9 with all of your information. Then you get a 1099 or should. Yeah, but that doesn't come from YouTube. So as I'm understanding it, that 1099 is something that you have to do for the IRS at the end of the year, not from YouTube. I do not know this because it's been 15 fucking years since I had to do this for YouTube. How am I supposed to remember what forms that they had me fill out back then? These are the bits of rags. You don't file your own taxes? Well, not through YouTube. You, you file your own taxes through, like, an actual, like, actual filing of taxes. YouTube doesn't do my taxes for me. Oh, Matt's here. So you send a W-9 so they can send you a 1099. Okay, so you need one before the other. Gotcha. So they need it for independent contractors. So we just went in a full circle. So it is co it, it is considered a contractor then for YouTube, right? So the question was, can you take back money that you already paid a contractor? And can you withhold payments that's due to a con payment due to a contractor? Those were the two questions. I'm getting no's and yeses. I don't know why I'm asking chat. That's just something I can look up. If a contractor does poor quality or unfinished work, you can ask for a refund. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. This is them going back and charging back in your account. But yeah, it looks like you can take money back from a contractor, but it has to be through like an actual refund process, whereas this new term is a chargeback, which is going into your earnings and taking it. Different types of contractors. Okay, let's see. Let's broaden the search. This one's for any service provider. That didn't answer the question. So it looks like in order to like force the refund, it has to be through a lawsuit. Is this right? No, that doesn't sound right. No, I probably won't play WWE 2K23. It's a prime high five in the resub bagel. What is that, Plutonian? Either way though, new policy is very scary. Very hard to fully understand the scope of what it'll do. To me, it still sounds like that's in a very legal gray area going into your account and taking money back that they've already paid you because you broke a rule on a video you uploaded well after you were paid. That seems very odd. That seems in a really wishy-washy area. A Reddit comment explained that YouTube is clarifying an, exi an existing part of the terms. 
The specific terms apply to all channels and videos where ads are playing, but the channel doesn't get ad revenue. This can include copyright claim content, and the terms are not referring to removing previously paid money from a person's account. It's referring to YouTube's collecting ad revenue that would have gone to the channel in the future, not the past. Well, that just makes it sound even scarier if it can even include copyright claimed content and you not get, and they can still charge back. Is, is, it, is that still not an issue? That makes it much worse. I assume this would be for like actual community guideline violations, like strikes. But the way that reads, assuming the Reddit comment's accurate, sounds like this can be hit if you even get a copyright claim. I'd hope the Reddit the Reddit comment isn't accurate. This is a random person on Reddit. I mean, yeah, usually how it goes. But an interesting interpretation of it. The beauty is in the vagueness. I spilled. I guess we'll see what happens. I already know the outcome won't be a change. It'll just be a uh, forced acceptance of it. As it always is with YouTube. It's not it's not vague. They're saying that the money you earned on a struck video will either be charged back or withheld from future ad revenue generated by your channel. What's not saying on... Where are you getting that? This is just anything that is deemed a violation, not just like a single video. Well, I don't I don't know what you're, where that's coming from. That w that doesn't make too much sense, especially since it is all AI generated. Exactly, that's a problem. Um, it's very confusing. It's I mean, what am I misunderstanding? He, he said Earnings the same thing. Payable to you. YouTube will notify you if any of these circumstances Look, occur and provide details on about how you can appeal in accordance with these policies. Now, the main problem that virtually everybody has spoken about on YouTube at some point in time, whether it is a creator with 1,000 subscribers, one of the best examples that I have on my channel of this happening to me is Chester. this video I did of an angry Clinton content strike that I got for, I'm not kidding, harmful and dangerous content. This video is literally a cat. It was an adorable little cat. And the cat is just sitting there. And this is where he talks Ram. about what it means. Now, it's one thing if YouTube makes a mistake and one of your videos disappears. At some point, There's any content driving. creator with thousands of videos is going to say mea culpa, oh, whatever it is, what it is. They're going to curse, but they realize that there's no other platform on the internet that is going to allow them the reach, the monetization that, that YouTube does. So they, they just kind of suck it up and deal with it. But I think something that's going to cause a lot of people to start saying, no, screw this, is the ability for YouTube or Alphabet to literally reach into your bank account and take back money that they gave you based on a robot striking your cat for hate speech because he was meowing. And that is what you have the potential for here. If I am reading this contract right, and if I'm reading this contract wrong and you're an attorney, please do let me know. This is a serious, serious issue. Now, again, they say even if you do something with your bank account, like let's say, I don't know, you know, set it up so that there's no money in it, no overdraft protection. So if Google tries to go in and take money out, there's nothing there. This is still an issue if your channel is creating revenue right now and they decide to go back and take back revenue from a few years ago. The obvious problem here is that even if you set up your bank account without overdraft protection and you immediately transfer money out of it the moment YouTube deposits money into it, is they can take away from future revenues. So the money, that you would make on YouTube last month is not given to you until this month, which would mean. So what am I not understanding? What 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 am, what am I not getting? Like it, it feels like the amount determined could be all over the place, though. Like so, his, in the example, his cat getting struck down by the AI for being hateful. How are they going to determine how much money to take back? Because let's say it gets it, it gets struck immediately. So at the moment, it gets struck like right away. Are they going to take any money then? Is it zero dollars or what? Or it gets struck after a hundred, then they take a hundred from future earnings or right away, whatever. Like, wh where am I lost? Because it seems like they could pretty much say anything. Take anything. Any money associated with it. So if there's zero dollars associated with it when it gets the, the hit... Zero dollars gets taken.
Because that, that, that's not what I get out of this. Well, maybe I just don't fully grasp it. Maybe it's over my head. Because if a video from three years ago gets hit, and that video made $1,000 over the three years, do they take the $1,000 now? Or whatever money it made after the hit? They just don't give you the 1000 But they already have. My video is three years old. It didn't get hit by the AI. But now it did. But that video had made me a thousand dollars and now all of a sudden it's a problem. Are they taking the full thousand or just only whatever it was making right before it became a problem? Because I've already made that thousand now, but now it's been hit. But the policy wasn't in place. Doesn't matter. It's retroactive. All of it's retroactive. So now I've lost a thousand dollars that I made three years ago. Because this new rule came into effect and the video that violates it didn't know the video that this rule was coming. I assume that it's after the strike. Well, after the strike, it's making zero dollars. So after the strike is zero dollars, which wouldn't matter if it happened immediately, because then the video made zero dollars. They can't take anything, I guess, as I understand it now. But if it hits an older video, like in his case, the cat video, let's say that cat video made $1,000, now it's been hit. Are they taking $1,000? Because it made $1,000 then, but now it's hit. Are they going to take $1,000 that he's already been paid out from future payments? He gives that exact example. He does in the way, so he says... About how you okay, strike. Because we'll he gives the example of like 20 bucks. But that's all, like, that's oh, not... Oh, whatever maybe, it is, maybe well, I'm not they're going to curse, but they realize that there's no other platform on the internet that is or YouTube or Alphabet to so literally reach into your bank 20, account 10, 000, and take back money more. that they gave you based on a robot striking your cat for hate speech because he was meowing. And that is what you have the potential for here. If I am reading this contract right, and if I'm reading this contract wrong and you're an attorney, please do let me know. This is a serious, serious issue. Now, again, they say even if you do something with your bank account, like let's say, I don't know, you know, set it up so that there's no money in it, no overdraft protection. So if Google tries to go in and take money out, there's nothing there. This is still an issue if your channel is creating revenue right now and they decide to go back and take back revenue from a few years ago. The obvious problem here is that even if you set up your bank account without overdraft protection and you immediately transfer money out of it the moment YouTube deposits money into it, is they can take away from future revenues. So the money, that you would make on YouTube last month is not given to you until this month, which would mean that let's say you're supposed to get, I don't know, a thousand bucks deposit in your bank account this month, and that video made you $20. That would mean that instead of getting a thousand bucks deposit in your account, you get 980. Now, so this example is talking about recent videos. You make a video, you're expecting a thousand dollars this month, it gets hit, you lose the 20, you lose $20. I'm talking about a video that was up way before the rules three years ago, years ago, it's already made you that thousand dollars, but then it gets hit. Well, it's making zero dollars after the hit. So what are they, are they taking anything or no? You're wrong. I, I'm asking a question. Does it take the full thousand or no? That's not what he said. I'm, I'm asking a different question than what he's talking about. We're talking about two different things. This applies retroactively to all content. If I had a video that made $1,000 three years ago, and it's already paid me $1,000, but now it's been hit, are they taking $1,000 from future earnings? That's my question. So everyone's saying yes. Do we see why that's a huge problem? If that's the case. Because I've already made that thousand dollars on a video that was totally fine for years until the AI came in with new rules and slapped it. And now that it's no longer okay, they're taking a thousand dollars from something that I made three years ago that I was not currently getting paid because I've already been paid it three fucking years ago. So now we can see why this is all an issue if this is all accurate, if that's the case. That's my question.
No one said it wasn't an issue. A lot of people in chat were saying it's not an issue. I don't know where that's coming from. There's a lot of issues with it, but I think that one's a glaringly obvious one that I think everyone can be able to meet in the middle and see what a huge problem that would be. Like, let's say Evolution of Dance got hit with the AI algorithm. That's generated hundreds of thousands of dollars. If it gets hit today, are they... <laughs> Is the guy behind Evolution of Dance going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt? Like, th th there's a lot of weird vagueness here. You keep the money you make. That's not what it sounds like, though. Your future earnings get penalized only if they can't take. If they can't charge back, then it goes to your future earnings. So it'll either be a chargeback where they directly take it back or it comes from future earnings. If your biggest video got taken down right now, they would charge back everything you made for that video. Is that confirmed though? Is that how this policy goes into effect? Is my question. I think it's too vague to actually know the real answer. Thanks for recent wonders. It's not about past videos, only revenue from here on out. Where do you see that? I don't see that stipulation any, anywhere in here. Their policies all apply retroactively, such as their new swearing policy. I just think it's too vague to know, like, the actual answers to these questions. And I, I don't think there'll ever be clarity. It'll probably just be a case-by-case -case basis kind of thing. Why are you asking us? People were getting mad at me for, like, talking about the potential ramifications as if it's all very clear. Which I don't see how it could be. It's fucking two sentences. Yeah, maybe Legal Eagle will do something on it. Like a really thorough breakdown. They have to mention future partnerships earnings, so it's probably about future content and old content can stay the same. Well, you are really doing a lot of liberties with that interpretation. The reason future partnerships is, is mentioned there, and as he mentions, means they can take it out of your upcoming pay. So if you release a video that makes $1,000, then it gets hit, now they're taking $20. It comes out of your next payment next month. So now you're $20 down. I don't know where you're getting that it's only affecting future content. I don't know where that is here. The future payments is about your upcoming payments that they'll just take from, just withhold. What'd you send me here, Matt? Okay, Matt sent me something from, I guess, a deeper dive. For any such violations, this is a, this is talking about the uh, non-qualifying revenue stuff. For any such violations, we need time to investigate whether the revenues need to be withheld, adjusted, or offset, and this may result in payment delays of up to 90 days or until we resolved any third-party rights disputes. Examples of violations where we might need to withhold or adjust your revenue include, but aren't limited to, instance of invalid traffic on your content, fake engagement, or content ID claims. That's a really scary one if it's content ID claims where they're going to start withholding. Like if you just get, this is a huge on TikTok right now. There are so many people that can just content ID claim your actual voice, like your actual audio. If it happens to content ID shit and you just lose all of it instantly and they withhold it or take in the chargeback, that's disastrous. And they have no systems in place to actually help you in that case. We'll inform you in writing by email or in product when we have to enforce our policies and we'll let you know what the options are. That doesn't inspire confidence. And that is pretty scary. Thanks, Arisa Coim. Chargebacks are such bullshit. Chargebacks are some baloney. So is YouTube going to charge you for content you made years ago? That was my question. That's what. That was one of my biggest things because I think that one is the most unclear. It would be very evil if they do. That would be beyond evil. 100%, yeah. That would be crazy. 
It doesn't say future. It says future partner earnings, not future videos. This just means your upcoming payments that they take from if you're in violation. If they decide a ton of back content is grounds for reduction in future paychecks, are you going to have to start owing them money? These are all questions that I was asking as well, because it's not clear exactly how this is enforceable or what they're planning to do with this. We don't know. I, I don't think there's any way to know.